your yard. What is it to you? Something you walk around in? A chore? Just part of the package that came with the home? Well, what if I told you your yard could be a hero? That's right, a hero. To our lakes and rivers, to our threatened wildlife, and to all of us who rely on a clean water supply. It's time to transform your yard, cut down on shallow-rooted turf, and let your property live up to its true potential. It's time to join the Rain Garden Revolution. What's a rain garden? It's more than your average flower bed. It's a basin designed to reclaim stormwater and trickle it back into the ground. Without this type of planting, stormwater races down our driveways, through our ditches, and over our streets, picking up pollutants and jumping into waterways unfiltered. Stormwater runoff impacts recreation and our lake's health. Salt and grit used for winter road safety harms fish and pollutes our water. Beach closures are more frequent and happen earlier every summer. Some forms of blue-green algae generated by fertilizer runoff into lakes can sicken dogs and people. We value and depend on our lakes, rivers, and groundwater, and we're at a turning point in history. Our natural resources simply won't last if things don't change. Feasible for most properties, large or small, your rain garden will make a difference in protecting our water. In this program, we'll walk you through a short how-to about creating a rain garden, show different ways to incorporate rain gardens, and then get specific with some key maintenance tips to provide maximum benefit over many years. Sometimes called an infiltration basin, a rain garden is designed and excavated to ensure that water drains within 48 hours to avoid mosquito growth and other issues. Instead of a raised berm planting, think of its reverse, a shallow depression that collects rain, roof, and yard runoff. As a bonus, the perennial wildflowers typically planted in a rain garden benefit pollinators by creating food and habitat. It can be as simple as providing a connection from your gutters into rain gardens installed about 15 feet from your home. Another spot for a rain garden is at the end of a sloping lawn, before runoff reaches a ditch. As long as the rain garden is in the path of water and the soil allows for the water to soak in, you've got a perfect spot. Testing your soil's infiltration rate will help determine if you've chosen a location that will allow for this. Rain gardens range in size roughly from 150 to 450 square feet. The rain garden uses deep-rooted native flowering perennials, clump grasses, and small shrubs to accomplish absorption. Rain gardens should be planted away from the root systems of trees and avoid underground utilities like gas and electric lines. Shady areas and root competition would not be ideal. A rain garden's goal should also be to trap sediment like leaves and grass clippings, in addition to infiltrating rain. Websites like Blue Thumb, the Universities of Minnesota and Wisconsin, and your local conservation or watershed district have resource material and plant species suggestions to create a successful rain garden. By using rain gardens to absorb the storm water from your roof, downspouts, and drive before it enters ditches and storm drains, you are part of the solution. So whether you're just getting ready to step on board or you already have a rain garden started, stay tuned for some advice on how to take care of and maintain your rain garden once it's been installed. And turn your yard into a hero. Next up are some examples of types of rain gardens. There are several ways to incorporate rain gardens into your yard to collect runoff from various sources. You could place one next to your walkway or driveway, leaving the edge lowered where it parallels the pavement, as in this example. Another location would be at the end of a downspout extension. This routes roof water to a rain garden at least 10 feet away from the house. As you can see from the examples, Rocks at the opening of the extension help slow the flow of water and grab sediment. Also useful are rain gardens placed just before ditches to catch water flowing from your property before it reaches the road. This type of rain garden combined with wildflower ditch plantings helps to infiltrate water from both your yard and the street. When collecting runoff from your house, be sure that the street side of the garden has a short berm to capture water from smaller rains, which means less water going into the ditches and storm drains. The berm will ensure water stays in the garden and is infiltrated, but not so high that a huge rain event backs water up to the house. 
If you live along a road with no curb or live near the end of curbing, you can install a rain garden to collect runoff from your street before it enters storm drains at that location. Include rocks at the flow entrance to catch sediment and reduce flow volume. Here is an example of a curb cut rain garden with two inlets. If this rain garden were not in place, the storm water would run right into the storm drain and get piped directly to the nearest water body. Instead, it's diverted into the garden for short-term storage, where it can infiltrate and remove sediments, leaves, and other pollutants coming from the roadways, rooftops, or driveways. Curb-cut rain gardens are usually only applicable to communities without sidewalks. Check with your city about rules and programs for rain gardens needing curb or sidewalk cutouts. Some innovative solutions for rain gardens near sidewalks or curbs designed to capture higher volumes of stormwater and filter out sediments include the rain guardian bunker, turret, or foxhole. Next up, some tips on rain garden maintenance. Maintenance will fall into two categories, keeping the rain garden working and keeping it looking good. Now let's jump into our year-by-year -year checklist. In growing season one, be aware of invaders, be it the turf grass from your lawn or weeds that sneak into the basin. Here are some tips for year one. One way to ensure your garden achieves enough density is to plant fewer species of plants in larger massings. Be sure each massing has enough plants to easily distinguish between what you planted and what are weeds sneaking in. Make sure plants have enough space to grow to their optimum widths and heights without crowding one another. This will help create a successful yet low maintenance rain garden. Good for you getting those plants in the ground. But beyond the plants, there's another key ingredient you've got to keep in mind, mulch. When a rain garden is first installed, typically about three inches of hardwood shredded mulch is applied. It will take plants a few years to mature and fill in the garden. So applying mulch ensures the garden's soil is shaded to prevent weed germination and reduces water needs for young plants. The bark will also break down about an inch and a half each year, so after two full growing seasons, you'll be down to zero inches of bark, with hopefully more established plants now filling out the garden. Mulch will be a huge help in keeping out weeds and holding everything in place. It also amends the soil when it breaks down, increasing water absorption. But even with mulch applied, be prepared to lose a few plants in the beginning. A major rainfall could wash away seedlings before they get established. It's a good idea to keep a list or outline a sketch of what was planted, as well as know what the growing stages of each plant look like to properly maintain your garden and only remove plants which don't belong. Minnesota Wildflowers and the USDA's Plants Database website are both great references for familiarizing yourself with your garden's plants. Here are a few more quick reminders for your rain garden's first year. To save money during planting projects, often plugs are used, which can dry out quickly. Don't forget to water plants, increasing the amount during the hot part of the summer. Even native plants need water during establishment. Regularly remove accumulated debris and sediment, as well as repair mulch washouts. Wait, accumulated debris and sediment? This may sound unappealing, but remember this is the benefit of the rain garden. Preventing this gunk from damaging trout streams, lakes, and rivers is what it's all about. And not to worry, there are techniques and devices to make this cleanup a cinch. One of the challenges with curb-cut rain gardens is the amount of sediment and debris that gets carried into them from the street, and how to best deal with it for whoever's doing the maintenance. As we mentioned earlier, a rain guardian pre-treatment chamber is a great option for curb-cut rain gardens, as it provides a stable inlet for water while capturing sediment, leaf litter, and garbage that may pass through. It was developed in Minnesota by the Anoka Conservation District for this purpose. Maintenance of this device is fairly simple, taking roughly five minutes or less. Otherwise, plan on shoveling debris like candy wrappers out of the rain garden and replacing bark washouts. For the other types of rain gardens, maintenance is just like other perennial gardening. According to area homeowners who have had them for a few years, maintenance is only around two to three hours a month. Cleaning out sediment from the rain garden entrance after every rain is key. So we're talking a handful of hours a month to maintain an established rain garden. You can handle that, right? And there are some innovative homegrown solutions to capturing that sediment too. 
You can also use larger stone pieces like flagstone, riprap, small boulders, or even a grass filter strip as the inlet into the rain garden. Now let's move on to growing season two. Growing season two is when a lot of little things can catch up to you. Forgot about watering during dry spells. Weeds like dandelions blew in. Mulch decomposed. Perennial weeds started to spread under the foliage of desirable plants, robbing the good guys of nutrients and water. Forgot to clean the sediment and debris out of the rain garden, and it killed plants or doesn't look as good. Plants were selected that will not achieve enough density to ever grow together. Next up, what happens when an older rain garden is not properly maintained and may need a revamp? Maybe you don't think a few little weeds is a big deal. Well, a few little sprouts may turn into trouble fast. The moist environment of a rain garden is ideal for germinating tree species like box elder trees, which can really create problems for your garden. While their seedlings may look innocent, they can quickly turn into trees and need to be gotten rid of soon. The root systems of trees and other weeds rob your rain garden plants of needed nutrients and moisture. Be aware of common weeds for your area, as some can be somewhat invasive. You don't want a garden full of them next year. Perennial and turf grasses are very aggressive and can quickly become a maintenance headache. Use plastic landscape edging, concrete edging, or cobblestones as edging to delineate the border of your rain garden. Edging will be a good defense against the lawn creeping back in, but we still have to deal with the weeds, which can be grassy types or leafy weeds, and either perennial, so they stick around to get only more troublesome, or annual weeds, which die at the end of the growing season, usually after depositing hundreds of unwanted seeds to wreak havoc next year. Quack grass spreads rapidly through underground stems. It may start as just a couple of plants, but its ability to rapidly reproduce assists it in colonizing your garden. The best time to get rid of quack grass is after a rain. You can take a long-handled trowel and slide under the runners of the parent plant to remove the entire plant. Just breaking off quack grass will not remove it, so be sure to do a thorough job getting rid of it as quickly as you see it begin to develop. Other weeds like plantains, dandelions, and thistles can be pulled manually. In extreme situations where your garden is becoming threatened, products with an active ingredient of glyphosate can be used. Glyphosate herbicide is a non-specific killer of grasses and weeds, so if you spray it on a desirable plant, that one will also die. The best way to stay on top of weeds is simply dedicating 15 to 30 minutes a week to the task, and count it towards your exercise for the week, too. In addition to edging and establishing a weeding routine, make sure to backfill any erosion washouts where stormwater has made a path of its own. Also, Replacing any plants that didn't thrive is important because gaps in the garden equal weeds moving in. It's important to keep the inlets to your rain garden clear of debris, especially when no form of pretreatment is used, such as our previously mentioned rain guardian. Sediment can build up in rocks or grass filter strips, creating a speed bump barrier for the water flowing into your garden. Once clogged, the effort and time needed to clear your inlets can become maintenance intensive. Ensure stormwater can flow into your rain garden by periodically clearing your inlets and making sure water can get in. It flows downhill, right? Other issues, like the buildup of invasive species, can get a little bit out of control. A determination may be needed about whether it's best to weed a garden that got away from you or simply salvage what key plants you can before excavating the garden to start fresh. To recap, here are some cues that it might be time to reassess your garden. The garden has filled up with sediment and water no longer infiltrates. Water no longer drains within 48 hours. Weed trees and invasive plants have taken hold and are choking out desirable wildflowers and the original plantings. You can no longer locate the plants from the original planting. So what are the key points to ensure your rain garden is low maintenance? It's important to remember the maintenance on your rain garden will evolve over time. There may be more maintenance needed up front in the first growing season or two that will decrease as your garden matures over the years. So don't get discouraged, it really does get easier. You'll need to stay on top of weeding and replenishing mulch while your native plants are still growing to their full size. 
If a pesky weed does take over an area, it may be faster to dig up a few existing plants and place black plastic over the area for a season, or dig out the weeds, spray the area, and then replant your plants. After three years or so, these tasks become less frequent. Remember, for perennial plants, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. Smaller plants will also need to be watered weekly to ensure they survive. If you have a curb-cut rain garden, clearing your inlet will be a critical part of maintenance throughout the life of the garden. Other types of rain gardens can still have their inlet clog up, which slows down or accidentally diverts water from the rain garden where we want it. Well, there you have it. Hopefully these tips will help take your rain garden from seedlings to successful deep-rooted wildflowers that are grabbing rainwater and returning it to the ground. And if you don't have the right location for a rain garden, you can still add deeper-rooted native flowers and grasses in place of shallow-rooted turf and skip mowing all that lawn. Also, remember to use water wisely by deep soaking lawn areas and garden beds, avoiding runoff to the street and ditches, only fertilizing your lawn when grass is actively growing, and saving rainwater with rain barrels. Even if you hit a few bumps along the way, you and your yard will be heroes in the next generation of landscaping. Hopefully we can continue increasing the number of rain gardens we see in our neighborhoods, cities, and townships, keeping more storm water out of our lakes and rivers. We're glad you're a part of the Rain Garden Revolution.